Hey, this is Lucas. They've got a nice little Harding lathe. that's like a watchmaker's lathe, but it's a little bigger. Uh, it's a model 37. It's from about 1906. And uh, the reason we know it's from about that era, there's kind of two uh, two clues that, that tell us it's it's later than a, you know 1900 and it's earlier than an 07. Uh, it's got an extra boss that's been added underneath the uh, the casting here to stiffen the bed. So that happened. I'm not certain exactly when that happened, but it's around 1900 or so. And then uh, it does not have the tool tray tool tray uh, boss that was added in 1807. So it's pre-1907. It's also called a 3C lathe. And uh, right now I'm just setting up to put a. Uh, I know some people may consider it kind of a travesty to put a three jaw chuck on a lathe like this, but uh, I'm going to do it. I think it'll uh, make it more useful for people. It does have a, a nice set of collets and a drawbar. Uh, there's the collets. The drawbar is uh, right there, that gray thing right above the tailstock chuck. Um, it's, got a, it's got some other nice tooling we'll go into later, but uh, I just want to show it cutting. It's got the standard 4 degree hardening taper in it that's all been cut in there. It came out real nice. It's locked in right now, so we're going to just uh, show this cut. Cutting the spigot for the uh, for the chuck, so uh, for this indentation, you see the chips. And the diameter again is about three and a half inches. So you see that boy, it cuts uh, it cuts great. It's uh, nice and smooth. Everything's working great on it. Well, I want to show the uh, run out now on the spindle. Actually, in the spindle and the chuck, uh, we're gonna. The spindle's really good. The chuck is awesome. So uh, it's about, well, it's actually looking like a right around one thousandths in its uh, with a ground rod, and it's about an inch and an eighth or an inch and a quarter from the chuck jaws. So uh, it's really quite good. One more time, and uh, here's the, uh, you know, that's three jaw chucks are kind of notorious for. Inaccuracies, but there you go. So you can see how far off the uh, off the uh, chuck jaws that is. And uh, this is a ground rad. It's a high precision uh, ground rad, drill rad. So uh, I'm not gonna fire it up here with that in place, but we can uh, we can back it out here, and uh, you can see just how how well this thing turns. And I'm gonna point this out. All of these shavings uh, came off of that little tool with that back plate and so I uh, actually did the final machining with the uh, with the lathe so here we go fire it up again the spools up so nice so quiet so uh, also uh, just some of the some of the equipment that the lathe is going to come with it's got the face plate it's got two uh, two tailstock chucks and the uh, tailstock V block the draw bar, all the collets. Uh, there's about uh, three, six, seven, oh, about a, about 13 of those. Uh, it's got uh, that three uh, chuck and the new uh, chuck wrench for that. And uh, two tools. It's got uh, this tool and then this one, which is actually kind of interesting. I've actually looked this guy up, E.E. Uh, e. Hill. Looked him up online, and uh, interesting guy. I think it's. I think uh, he was. Uh, Around uh, from around Chicago in New York, so uh, some other equipment that it's got with it. It's got a really nice, uh, almost unused steady rest. It's got a faceplate cover, and it's got the offhand or manual uh, tool rest for uh, oh the typical uh, watchmakers, the milling uh, cutter holders, and a uh, and a. Neat little, neat little drive system for like a grinder. So uh, it's got a whole bunch of these milling cutters. I think there's four of them of different diameters. They fit the uh, tail stack. And then it's got some other uh, miscellaneous stuff, including uh, the outside jaws for the three jaw. So uh, it's really a nice little lay that works great. And uh, real happy with the way it came out. 
it's on a nice stand. It's got the stand's got a uh, uh, belt tensioning system on it, so you can tension up the belt, control that. This is a modern belt. It's a uh, automotive belt, and uh, seems to work nice. I, I have turned it inside out. It seemed to be a little less vibration uh, this way than it was the other way. Uh, I think it's just that the surface is harder than the other side. It doesn't seem to have any trouble transmitting power, even though it's harder and a little glossier. Okay, and uh, here's uh, one of the uh, the uh, Harding Cataract Bench Lathe, Harding Brothers, Chicago, Illinois. And uh, there's two interesting little cartouches. There's one here and there's another one there. Uh, and then uh, this actually is marked Harding. We know this is Harding because it's got these little uh, retaining pins in the in the rocker, which is a Harding patent. So this is all Harding. We know that's all original. I believe that's an original Harding tailstock. It's an 1806 lathe, roughly. I think I mentioned that earlier. Okay, hey, this is Lucas signing up.